Welcome to the Business Spotlight Series. My name is Tanner O'Brien. I'm a senior partner here at Action Coach in Central Texas. Today, I'm sitting down with my guest, Jonathan Carr, who is the president and the founder of Vehicle Reman. So excited to be jumping in. Jonathan, thank you, first of all, for taking some time and being here with me this morning. Uh, why don't we just start with a little bit of background? You Tell us, you know, for, for those in the audience that don't know, uh, tell us what the business is and what it does, and then we'll take a step back and kind of walk through how, you know, your history and kind of what led up to, to founding the company. But let's start with that. Background, what is uh, Vehicle Reman? Okay, so uh, Vehicle Reman is an alternative to buying new trucks when your old ones kind of are end of life, right? So our target market are our fleet companies. Um, and so especially trucks that are, you know, very heavily equipped, uh, things like that, we can remanufacture them for sometimes 70 to 50% less than what they're going to be spending new. Um, we're greener than electric. It takes us two weeks. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's there's just a lot of benefits to it. I didn't I didn't go out to start a business. I found this model and I was like, holy crap, this thing is awesome. I want to do that. So, you know, it's it's not often when you've been in automotive your whole life that you find an automotive like separate thing that you're like, I want to do that, right? This seems awesome. So yeah. Awesome. Uh, well, I mean, that, that is super clear. I love that. And I'll, and I'll ask some questions as we get kind of deeper into it, but let, let's take that step back and let's talk a little bit about kind of your journey. Um, I know you and I were talking just briefly beforehand, a uh, number of years in kind of the automotive industry, uh, kind of coming through this thing. Give us the the snapshot, the high level view of kind of what your journey has been leading up to, to founding this business. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So um, I grew up in automotive. So my dad started a repair shop about a month before I was born. Um, and he started it, uh, because he went to a place and just got typical, you know, crappy service and he went home and he was frustrated. And so he wrote down like the top 10 things he was frustrated by. Um, and he was like, loving your neighbor as yourself checks every one of these boxes. It fixes all of these things. So he'd never been an automotive or anything, but he felt like he saw an opportunity. And so he did that. Uh, it was just the one shop for probably 15, 20 years or whatever, me growing up. Um, and then it started growing. Um, and so it's called Christian Brothers Automotive. Uh, we were actually talking because I used to run the store right down the street from you. Um, and so, yeah, it was just a really neat opportunity because uh, I got to, you know, be a service writer. Um, I got to, <laughs> I got to, right, clean the shop and the toilets and all that kind of jazz. Uh, then eventually I had my own franchise, um, did some store turnarounds, things like that. And then, uh, went to the corporate office for about four years, um, and just kind of got to see everything at the macro level, which was, which was super cool after, you know, being store level for so long. Oh man, that is so cool. So where was this transition into kind of starting the business of today? Um, at, at what point did kind of that come about, um, taking that leap and, and moving into to this realm? Kind of tell me a little bit about that transition. Man, it's kind of a crazy story. So I was running our charitable foundation when I found out about this. And our biggest project is we were fixing cars for free for single moms, okay? Um, and so I was networking and trying to find people that might support or whatever. And I met this guy and he was like, man, I was in this business with this guy years ago and it went great and it's automotive. And he started it cause he wants to help single moms. And I was like, man, if I didn't trust you and know you, like I would think that you're making that up. Um, but I was like, man, I guess I ought to meet this dude. And so I did, and we just hit it off really well. Um, and so I ended up taking over the company from him. He's still involved and yeah, it's just been, it's been a cool thing. It's been a really cool thing. I love that. Um, uh, I got some, some fun questions that, uh, you know, listening to the background, kind of knowing now a little bit more of the story. Um, uh, so like for, for transparency, clarity, all that kind of stuff, uh, your dad started Christian brothers automotive. Is that yes. correct? Mm -hmm. And then that turned into a franchise model is yes, what sir. I heard. Beautiful. Um, so I, I, I got to ask some questions because one of the, the things I love talking to other people about is family business, uh, <laughs> working with family, things like that. Um, you know, we hadn't talked about this beforehand, but I'm actually in business with, with my parents. Uh, okay. My dad's, uh, you know, been in business with, uh, he was in business with his, his 
his father, my great grandpa, like all the way back through, they had a, a moving company back in the day. Um, awesome. So, you know, family business, is one of those things that's kind of near and dear. Uh, but uh, wanted to get kind of your take, you know, growing up around a business that has kind of turned, ended up turning into a family business. You worked in, you know, the business with your dad and, and watched it grow and all that kind of stuff. Uh, what was that like? What were some, I don't know, some lessons learned along the way of things that like worked really well and some things that, you know, as a, you know, parent child relationship in a business that maybe didn't go as well as, as it could have. Oh man, there's, there's lots of all of that. Um, <laughs> um, man, I, I don't, I don't want this to be a cop out or anything. Um, but like my dad barely graduated high school, didn't go to college. Um, you know, my brother and I are not that far off ac academically. Uh, right. And so what, what we honestly say and what I truly believe is like the reason we were successful is because we did our best to apply the fruits of the spirit to everything that we did. And like, that's just something like you can be a Christian. You can not be a Christian. Like if you read those, they are good things. Right. And so really like that was the main consistent thing. We did not have a growth plan. Um, we didn't have like these target revenue numbers. Like it was just like, let's just do this and see where it goes. Um, and man, it grew to 280 stores, which is crazy crazy to me um because yeah the one wouldn't even really provide all that much when i was growing up um and so so yeah yeah that that's been kind of it one of the really cool things is my dad and i got along so well that even when i was at the shop right like i was in georgetown it was 45 minutes away from home and i would call him almost every day on my way and be like hey this is what's happening in the shop what are you guys doing about this at corporate what's going here what's going there and so just the kind of brainstorming and getting to kind of soak that in and just, it, it, it was just, it was a, it was a, it was a very cool experience. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm glad that I found a place to, to put it to use. <laughs> Man, I love that so much. And you know, that, that relationship with getting along, I think is um, sometimes it's underplayed in, in how family business can operate and things like that. I know that's kind of been our experiences. You know, my dad and I got along and we also had very different roles in the business. You know, we weren't trying to compete for the same type of thing. And, and that made, you know, a world of difference in us not butting heads and things like that. So um, that's fantastic. So let, let's, let's talk a little bit about vehicle reman and yeah. kind of your role in the business today. So if you, you know, you've got the title of president and founder, um, what does what does your job role look like in the business today, especially as you continue to grow it, things like that? Kind of what's what's your day to day uh, function look like within the business? Man, good question. Uh, I'm I'm wearing a few hats right now, um, but but I would say the things that I'm really trying to drive is one sales. Um, I've never done cold outreach before, uh, and it is not easy, <laughs> and I'm I'm kind of learning as I go. Um, so just a lot of kind of trial and error stuff there. Um, but then the other thing that I'm really trying to work on, or I have worked on, I think we're at a good place on is our pricing model. Um, it's just a different animal than consumer, right? Than Christian brothers. And so I was kind of pricing stuff more towards that, like with no intention to be like, I'm going to make all this money off these people. It was just like, that's kind of what I knew. Um, so just really changing you know, how we structure things and how we price things. And dude, there can be 150 parts on these tickets. It can be 120 labor hours, right? And so a big challenge has been trying to make that into bite-sized chunks for our customers, right? Where it's digestible and, you know, they're not, they don't get to a point where they're just like, okay, yeah, I guess I'm doing this without fully understanding what they're doing. Um, and really getting to make decisions, right, on what do I want to do, what don't I want to do. Um, and it, that was always our intention, but I just realized it, it's way different, right? Like when I was at Christian Brothers and you call a customer and you say, hey, this thing could be as much as $2,500. Let's go through it and say, hey, you may not need this because of this, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and that's what I was doing with these tickets. And they're twenty dollars to $100,000, Right. And people just don't have the same level of patience or care <laughs> once they see that number. And I'm like, no, but we'll drop it by half. I promise. They're like, yeah, okay, buddy, whatever. <laughs> Talk to you later. <laughs> 
So we've we've kind of changed things uh, with a bigger variance to kind of cover a lot of the unknown stuff, which has been helpful. Um, and then really like customer service and wows, right? Like I was talking to my dad the other day and it was just great to kind of be reminded of the fact that like our lobby is our truck, right? Like one of the things that made Christian Brothers successful early on was it was revolutionary to have a clean lobby. Right. <laughs> like he walked in and like, that was a big <laughs> deal. Um, and so, right. What are we going to differentiate ourselves on? Are we going to start painting some accessory components? Are we going to make sure that engine is detailed? You know, are we going to put some kind of spiff in there for the driver since they didn't get a new truck and, you know, will this make them a little bit happier? And that's what I love to do. That, that is my favorite. Um, I would love very much to just have some, consistent sales coming in, nothing crazy. Um, and for me just to really get to focus on quality and wow on the customer. Uh, cause yeah, I was bad at a bunch of stuff running shop, but quality and, and customer service. I was, I was very, very good at. Oh man. I love that so much. Um, uh... Well, you, you bring up kind of a, an interesting or a good point, I guess, uh, you know, the difference in, in clientele or customers. So if you're working primarily on fleet vehicles, um, you know, that lends to business to, you know, business clients versus consumer clients, right? Mm -hmm. um, which is a different animal when it comes to marketing and sales and kind of all the different stuff that comes along with it. Um, so with that, kind of what, what have you found to be most effective in kind of having some of those initial conversations or, you know, going into to cold outreach, uh, what methodologies kind of have, have worked best for you? Kind of what, what have you tried that you're like, eh, I don't know if that's kind of the, the best fit for us, but oh, gosh, uh, give, us, yeah, give us some of your experience on, on what, just what you've experienced in, in your business. Man, honestly, like the most successful thing I've done so far, and obviously it's so simple, which it always is. And I just started like a week or two ago was LinkedIn messages. And all I do is say, do you think you would ever consider remanufacturing your fleet? And it's just that question. Right. And I think before what I've been saying is like value, value, here's the stuff you should care about, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, I just needed to figure out a way to kind of open it up for them to come in as they please, right? Um, and so that's that's been cool. Um, I will tell you one of my favorite things about B2B that I, I didn't see coming was, <laughs> now take this with a grain of salt, but like is how much more reasonable the customers are. <laughs> <laughs> like, because... Because they're in business to make money and, and they understand that if they, you know, aren't like allowing me to do that, then it's not going to be a good relationship. And one of my huge things is win-win. Everything's got to be a win-win. Mm -hmm. And so what, what's been really cool about that though, is if they like have a price or if they have a budget, we can normally get exactly what they want within that budget because they are reasonable. They understand what things cost. Right. And so it's just that that's, that's been nice. I've, I've enjoyed that. Oh, I love that. And I, I guess I can imagine, especially in, in this industry, um, it's probably a little less emotional when it comes to, you know, business clients versus, versus retail clients. Yeah, it's um, an asset versus like, you know, your baby. Yes. Um, so like when you look at, you know, your, your best clientele, your best customers, um, do you have size of business that tends to work best? Like if they have just a, you know, a couple of vehicles in the fleet versus, you know, ginormous, you know, uh, you know, sets of fleets, things like that. Uh, is there, is there one that tends to fit better uh, for, for y'all or is it just kind of across the board or tell me a little bit about that? I mean, they're, they're both great. We, we do a ton of both of them. Obviously I'm never going to mind somebody that is just going to, you know, send a few trucks as a good baseline every month. So we'll take those big companies all day long, um, but they're more of the long game too, right? And so we've honestly had a ton of success with home services companies, electricians, AC, plumbers, construction, utility construction, um, really, man, anything where you look and you're like, man, I bet they spent some, some coin on whatever that upfit is on the back of that truck. Like that's where we shine. 
I love that. Um, so as you look back, we're, I'm going to take us a, a step a little bit away from you know the day to day of the business today, uh, and you look back at kind of the the journey you've been on really since you know you were a kid through today. Uh, what are some of the the biggest business lessons that stand out to you? Um, I'm, I, I would have to guess that there's a number of them that you've learned along the way that have kind of helped you become who you are today. But, you know, are there one or two that just kind of stand out in your mind over and above some of the rest that you can share with us today? Uh, I don't know if this is advice or a warning, <laughs> but it's always harder <laughs> than you think that it will be 100% of the time. And even when you're like, oh, no, that's going to be hard. I, well, I know that's going to be hard. No, it's going to be pretty hard. I know. You don't know. You have no idea. <laughs> you never, ever do. Um, and so, it, but in, with that, I think, uh, comes, I, I joke that I have a high tolerance for failure um, because you just have to take those lessons where it was too hard, where it was harder, and learn and move on. Um, and for somebody like me that wasn't all the greatest at academics, uh, learning from experience is, is what I had. <laughs> and so, yeah, that's, I, 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 I have, man, just not giving up. Like, unless you think that something is just off and it is the something broken within what you're trying to do, then like, keep going. Um, yeah, it's just, Every it's like every six months I look back and I'm like, if I would have known now what I knew then, we would be here, right? <laughs> and so, um, but honestly, some of some of the best advice or some of the best advice, some of my other favorite advice is like find people that have already stepped in the shit that you don't want to step in and have them pointed out so you can step on over it. Um, so I'm just a firm believer in finding people that have already made the mistakes uh, and learning from those just so I got enough on my own that I'm dealing with. <laughs> oh, that, that yeah. is that that is such a big piece. Uh, and, you know, in reality, for, you know, for those that, that are looking at, you know, how do I how do I gain lessons from other people? Like myself? sometimes you still step in it. But at least now you can, you know, get it cleaned off and move a little bit faster because somebody's yeah, before you walk all through the house with it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's crazy. So, uh, what about the next three to five years? Is you kind of, you know, cast the vision for for where the business is headed, kind of where your role in the in the business is is potentially going to change as the business grows. Um, what kind of cast the vision for us? Where where are things headed in the next three to five years? Oh, for sure. Thanks, Ben. So. Um, first step is to get the shop that we have in Gerald running at capacity consistently and efficiently and with the highest of quality control, right? So we are focused here, um, until we go anywhere else. Uh, but really like at the end of the day, from the model perspective and not getting ahead of myself, but like really kind of in the future is franchising. Um, one of the things that I was so excited about, and I kind of mentioned earlier was I was like, man, this is like Christian brothers, but easier, right? <laughs> you got, you got five trucks a month instead of 500, like you're talking to customers twice for every visit versus 20 times, right? Like there's just all of these things and it's just, it's such an easier model to franchise just because of the way that it works and the little differences that it has, um, they, they go a long way. Ooh. What are you most excited about when it comes to the franchising side of things? Honestly, man, I'm, I'm excited to try out this model that we've been talking about. Okay. So like you can make commission pretty easy doing what we do, especially if you're in any kind of world with fleets and you're just doing warm introduction type stuff, right? Um, I can't say this is exactly what it would look like, but it'd be something around this, right? Is I want to I want to be able to allow people that could never own franchises to own franchises, okay? So the first way that I want to do that is by incentivizing people that can sell, right? So I'll be like, hey, you want to go to Dallas and you want to sell a bunch in that market to where it requires us to build a building and put up a shop there? You can have a cut of that franchise. Part of that is yours. You got the customers. 
You're the one that developed the relationships. You keep developing the relationships. We'll get you somebody in there that'll help manage shop stuff if that's not your gig. And then you're there, right? But then, and this is further down the road, but I, I get in trouble for that, but I'm going to do it right now. Um, but so like the other thing this thing lends it to lends itself to is remanufacturing our own parts, right? So eventually we're going to start remanufacturing our own AC compressors, you know, brake, uh, brake master cylinders. I almost lost my mind. I thought I forgot. Um, it, you know, whatever's the most cost effective, right? And so you can with that, right? Like if, if you are producing enough to where we're buying or you're reboxing or honestly to make it less complicated, if we just have an overflow of trucks that need reman, right? Then like, for example, there was a neighborhood in Houston I was working with kind of low income um, over, you know, on the east side. And they had like just these amazing nonprofit organizations in their community that were teaching people how to work. And then from there, how do you build a business in that? Right. Mm -hmm. And so what I would love nothing more, um, let me back up again. So my days as a foundation, I believe that the most effective way um, to help people right now is urban development, which creates real estate appreciation. Right. So my ideal, right, would be I'm going to go in one of these neighborhoods and I'm going to rent a warehouse um, and then we're going to find community members to kind of go in. And we'll find some professionals as well and say, hey, this is what you're going to do. This is going to be your gig. And if you do ABC and go through this program, right, you can own this franchise. And then eventually you can take it from here and go put it somewhere else and we'll put somebody else in this building. Um, and so uh some of my other favorite business advice is people are people are uh consistently surprised at how little they can do in five years and how much they can do in 30. And so ever since I read that, like I try and think in 30. Um, and so when I'm talking this stuff, like I'm not crazy, we're not like, you know, I'm not trying to do this tomorrow, but like that's that's the plan. Um, and I actually do have a plan for it, <laughs> but that's where I want to be. That's where I want to land is using this thing to put franchises in families that couldn't have had them otherwise. Ooh, that's casting a vision. I love that. Um, Thanks, well, Jonathan, we, I, mean, I know we covered a, a ton already in the conversation, uh, but I always like to kind of get into just a few rapid fire questions. Just pull, uh, we'll call them wisdom nuggets for the audience. Uh, just a couple things that they can take away, that sort of thing. So, um, when you look back at kind of everything so far, what would you say for you has been kind of your key to success? Man, I don't know what your audience is, but like it has been my relationship with God. It has 100% been that. Um, like I go to bed at night and I'm like, I don't know what I would do if I didn't have this to hold on to. It's freaking terrifying. <laughs> you know, you, you know, you want confirmation on what's happening. You want more than you get. Uh, but that's the only thing for me that has been consistent. Everything else has been this. Ideas that you think are going to take off don't. Opportunities that you think are coming ghost you, right? But like that's that's been my that's really been my my only my only constant. Ooh, that's a good answer. Um, how about advice? If you could give just one piece of advice for the audience to leave here with today, what piece of advice would you want to give them? Honestly, pray hmm. in whatever way suits you, right? Like there's this really, and I'm going to send it to you, Tanner, but like there's this really awesome book by C.S. Lewis. Um, and it's actually just a compilation of different chapters and essays from his books, like over time. Do you know what I'm talking about? I don't know if I've, uh, I've come across this one. Uh, Most people haven't. It's a, it's called how to pray. And I found it in some random bookstore in Florida. And so now I give them away all the time, but that book changed my life more than anything because it, it made me realize I don't have to be in any certain kind of way. I don't have to pray in any certain kind of way, right? Like all he wants is my honesty. That's it. 
And one of the one of the quotes from there that I was like, man, that's cool, right? Like, what a cool God where he basically said, C.S. Lewis is saying, man, even if you don't want to talk to him, even if you're mad, yell at him and say that I don't want to be this way. And he will honor the fact that you know that your heart is not in the right place. You don't have to get right before you can do that. Like, God's tough. <laughs> he can handle it. <laughs> And so, man, I can't tell you how many times I've been like, I am pissed off at you. And I'm like, I know I shouldn't be, <laughs> but like, that's, that's what I'm feeling. I need help to get through it. Um, and so, Ooh. yeah, that, I mean, I don't know if that's, but that's, that's what, I, that that's what I would say. Dang. I love it. And that, that like basically answers my next question, which is a book recommendation. Um, outside of that phenomenal book, is there any additional book recommendations you'd want to give to the audience? Yeah, um, I think a few kind of my favorite business books are uh, Originals by Adam Grant, um, Black Box Thinking by Matthew Syed, S-Y-E-D, and then this is so dorky, but, uh, and I have not read this whole thing. I would never pretend to in a million years. Uh, but there's this like encyclopedia type series called the story of civilization. And so what happened was like, it was in like the twenties or thirties. There's this dude, uh, named Will Durant and he was looking at history and everything was siloed. Right. So you had like agriculture, science, da, 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 da. and he's like, man, nobody, has ever synthesized all these things and put them together so you can watch them like in the reality of what it, how, how it, you know, uh, progressed. Um, and so the story of civilization, uh, by Will Durant, uh, is one of the cooler things, uh, that I've gotten a chance to read a little bit of. I kept going in and bugging this dude that worked at, like I call it a little Harry Potter bookstore down the street from me. He's like, oh, he's behind his desk <laughs> with the books up, right? Um, and I was always like, what about this? What about this? I want to learn about this. And he was, he was always helping me, but he was like, John, he's like, I don't know, but if, 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 if you want to know, it's probably in that book somewhere. So go check it out. <laughs> so I was like, all right. <laughs> Dang, those are some good recommendations and ones that I haven't gotten to put on my list yet. So that is absolutely fantastic. Uh, we'll do one more rapid fire, and then we'll kind of get to the, the official wrap up here today. Uh, and this one's just kind of fun. Uh, when you look at your business today, if you could take a little bit of magic dust and sprinkle it all over with just one spot, that's the key. You only get to choose one spot in the business uh, where you would sprinkle it all over that one spot. You wake up tomorrow. It's 10 times better than it is today. Where would you choose to put that magic dust? It's such a boring answer. I, I I mean, I would say sales right now and just like introductions, right? Like not even sales as much as just like, I just want to talk to the right person and for them to like understand I what I'm saying is not a lie. <laughs> <laughs> and like, if you just can believe that I'm not lying for like 10 seconds, I let me, let me explain how this is real. <laughs> uh, but, well, that's, it, boring or not, that's a phenomenal place to put a little bit of extra magic. Heck yeah. Uh, that's, that that's or awesome. sprinkling some, you know, pixie dust all over that truck and just figuring out the best possible way to deliver it back <laughs> to the customer. There you go. That's a good one too. Um, all right. So before we get to the final question, I always love to kind of wrap up these conversations on for those in the audience that want a little bit more information, that want to see all the work that y'all are doing, uh, that want to connect with you potentially, you know, where can we advise them to go for a little bit more information? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, it, you can go to our website at vehiclereman.com. Um, or you can always just shoot me an email at Jonathan, J-O-N-A-T-H-A-N, at vehiclereman.com. Beautiful. For those that are watching and listening, I will make sure to put all that in the description below. So make sure you grab uh, grab a moment, go click the links, uh, send Jonathan an email, say, hey, saw you on the business spotlight, great conversation, just wanted to connect all that kind of stuff, especially here in the kind of general Austin metro area. Uh, it's always fun to make some connections with other business owners and things like that. So make sure you take a moment and do that. Yeah, uh, it'll but, be fun. Yeah, yeah. So outside of that, I've, I've got one final question I always like to kind of wrap out these conversations on. 
And that is simply, Jonathan, what is most inspiring to you today? Man, I, I would probably have to say my daughters. Um, like, they're four and seven, and I don't know, like, all the cheesy stuff, right? Like, I just want to be better. I want to be a better dad. I want to be a better husband. Like, you know, it's just, it's it's very easy to be, like, lovingly motivated by those girls. I, I like them a lot. I like them a lot. <laughs> Oh, it is always fun to kind of hear the the answers when it comes to family and things like that. It, it is truly inspiring. Um, so, Jonathan, thank you so much. This has been a genuine pleasure. Um, I know I could probably sit here and, you know, talk your ear off for you know, another hour. Uh, but I just want to say thank you for taking a little bit of time and allowing us to kind of dive into your story a bit today. So thank you. For sure. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, it was, it's been awesome. It was really fun.